Ah, I hate to interrupt the solo. Shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. I hope everyone who watches my channel in Russia is doing well. Much love to you all. And I know you guys are going to be excited for today's reaction. Because today, I'll be once again reacting to Arya, a classic metal band from Russia, who I've slowly but surely been becoming a fan of. And I'll be listening to the song Deception. I have the lyrics translated, and I will get into them after the reaction itself. But first, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, let's start a conversation. And also, I just want to let you guys know, this video will have subtitles. I know that you guys have been asking for that on a few of these reactions. You may not see them right away, so give it a few hours after the video goes up for the subtitles to appear. Also, if you want to make a song request and make sure it gets a reaction right away, join my Patreon, linked in the description below, and join Tier 4 on there, and that's how you get that special VIP treatment. Alright, Aria, Deception, it's an over 5 minute long song. I hope it's as good as the other songs I've checked out so far. But, let's see. That's enough speculation for now. Let's jump into this. Why am I getting Metallica vibes from how the song is starting? I don't know why. I just am. Um, like certain songs in particular, like Nothing Else Matters, I think, comes to mind. I don't know. I'm just getting that kind of energy off of this, which is funny because I was just talking about that band the other day. Um, but so far, so good. Um, his voice is always on point. That's something I've really come to appreciate about Aria. Um, and it feels like this is a slow buildup, and it feels like there's a certain bit of emotional darkness to it. So we'll see where it goes from here. Um, but it gets me very intrigued. I'll just put it that way. Oh. Okay, that's one hell of a changer. Oh, love this tempo. Он будет погребен в ритовом гробу в стиме пустой. Где грязи падали у шакала. И тысяча коней затопчет путь к нему, что плач людской. Сон мертвеца не оскорнял. This particular part almost has like a classic rock feeling. It's it's cool though. Like I'm I'm on board with it. Like I like it. Um, I wasn't expecting uh, that sudden of a transition. It it worked for the song, but it was a little bit jarring for me as a first time listener. Uh, but it, it's still good though. So far, it seems to be like a mix of different styles kind of stitched together. And I don't necessarily know that it's perfectly well put together and well mixed at this point. Uh, I'm not even halfway through the song yet. Um, Again, it is a little bit jarring for a first-time listen. So again, while I don't know that the transition is quite seamless, uh, so far I'm enjoying the music, and that's really what counts. So let's get back to it. Really taking these guitar parts. Шаманы и шити шакала проклянуты на бегу. Пронзи предателя, 
я. Царь должен быть святым и право не дано свергать серию с небес величие его. А царский сын смеется, шакалей дух себе храня. One thing I got to say about Arya is that uh, almost every song I've reacted to has sounded different in its own way. Like this gives me a totally different feeling and vibe than some of the uh, songs I reacted to previously. So points for that. Let's keep going. I like those drum rolls. Too. All right, I was hoping for a solo. The solo feels very loose and playful, and I like that. Uh, I hate to interrupt the solo. Shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. What have I done? But I gotta say, I love how the solo is working in tandem uh, with the rhythm guitar. The way those guitars are singing together, it just, it's awesome. Apologies for disrupting the really good solo. Let's continue. <laughs> Oh, long solo. I'm taking this for sure. How is this band ever popular in the U.S.? Okay, you know, I was going to say at first, at first, like in the first two minutes or so, um, I was going to say that I maybe didn't like this song quite on the level of some other Aria songs. But then from there, it just kind of blew up. And then the guitar solo kicked in. And by that point, I was like, okay, my initial impression was wrong. I, I like this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, so I do like it. It really holds up, even in comparison with the previous songs by this band that I've heard so far. Um, it's really damn good. It is. I will say, though, my one criticism, it took me a little bit of time to think about it to be sure if it was a criticism that I wanted to make. My one criticism is that the beginning of the song feels very disconnected from the rest. Like, if the song had found a way to circle back around to that beginning part somehow and sort of weave that back into the music, I would have appreciated that much more. Um, but I feel like the way the song began was so unlike the rest of the song that the song could have done without that intro entirely. Yeah, I, maybe this is a, a controversial opinion, and let me know in the comments if you disagree, and of course why. Um, but I feel like that intro wasn't needed, because it gave me the, the vibe, and it gave me the impression that the song was going to be completely different in terms of its energy and in terms of uh, its style. It felt like they were going for a very, a very much more dark and emotional song when I heard that initial soft guitar. And then when the, uh, the heavy part kicked in, it was, again, very jarring. It was uh, sort of disconcerting. And because of that, I feel like 
that intro would have been better used for a song that would have stuck with that kind of energy because the rest of the song had a very fast paced, more wild kind of feeling. Um, and I like that. I like that about the song. Um, but that beginning part, probably I think I could have done without. Uh, so that's my one little critique. But the rest of the song, I really thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, the guitar work was awesome. It was really on point. Uh, the vocals, always really good when it comes to this band. Uh, and I want to repeat what I said before. I don't know why this band didn't become popular here in the States. Uh, I could see maybe during the 80s because... Uh, Americans were not exposed to a lot of international music that much back then. But even years later, like in the early 2000s, by that point, a lot of metalheads were listening to a lot of music in Europe. Um, and I don't see why this band didn't start to appeal to people over here on this side of the pond. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a mystery. <laughs> uh, because this is a good band, and I, I do believe that their music is really consistently, qualitatively, uh, on par with a lot of the classic American metal bands. Um, so I see no reason why this shouldn't be a celebrated band, uh, especially given all the albums and given the popularity that they have in Russia itself. I don't know, um, but very good nonetheless. Really enjoyed the music. Now, of course, let's get to the lyrics. In the dawn hour, the jackal, forgetting about hunger, follows from the hill, behind the dark cavalry in the distance. Today is a black day. The ruler of the world is dead. Both old and small, they cannot hold back their tears. He is a good lord. He was the sun and he was the moon. The empire remained his widow. He will be buried in a jade coffin in the steppe empty, where the jackal dreams of carrion. And a thousand horses will trample the path to it, so that human crying, the sleep of the dead, did not defile. The jackal barks hoarsely that the dead king is his relative, only fangs and greed, and the blood is one. It's all a lie that he was the kindest king. It's all not true. He ruled with fire and sword. It's all a lie. I am your king and I alone. People are like animals. When power over the world is given, it's all deception. Interesting. Shamans and priests of the jackal will curse, and on the run, pierce the traitor with a spear. The king must be holy, and the right is not given. Overthrow by the beast, from heaven is greatness. And the king's son laughs, jackal spirit in itself keeping. Only fangs and greed, and there is only one blood. Wind, an ancient inhabitant of the steppe, his, he still remembers the horse howl. So I think this one is different lyrically than any other Arya song I have checked out so far. Because this one tells a story as well as having a message. Um, well, actually, I, I suppose I've heard other Arya songs that also tell a story. But it wasn't as detailed. I feel like this is much more thorough and much more well-written possibly the best when it comes to any lyrics that I've read from the band up to this point. And so this talks about the death of a king, and everyone mourns him and says how great he was, when in fact he was a tyrant and a horrible person. And that always seems to be the case in the real world. Like, right after someone dies, even if they were a terrible person in life, people act like they were perfect and they romanticize that person's existence. And I'm not sure why people do that, other than that we as a a society, we as a culture, are taught to have a certain reverence for the dead in general. But even that doesn't make total sense to me. Like, back when I was younger, uh, there was this person who died that was a horrible human being when he was alive. He had been abusive toward people and just was not a good person. And I said so in a kind of public way, which of course, in retrospect, was not a smart idea. Uh, but someone else who knew him, and who knew how bad of a person they were, they basically said to me, oh, you don't disrespect the dead. And it's like, why? First of all, that sounds extremely superstitious. And second of all, I don't believe that a person who was horrible and evil in life deserves to be honored after death. And so this song seems to be about people continuing a facade, clinging to a deception that this was a good, kindly king, that even, even the starving jackals forget about their own hunger because the loss of him is so great which really fits in with a lot of real-world propaganda about politicians and how certain people have this kind of cult status and that really crops up around them. And after they're gone, the people who supported them go to ridiculous lengths to venerate them and to paint a picture of them that is the complete opposite of who they really were in life. And again, I think that is one of the absolute most ridiculous things that we do as a society. And maybe it's rooted in religious thinking, 
in the idea that everyone has the chance to be forgiven and find peace after death. Fine, if that's what you believe. But don't gloss over or deny the atrocities that someone committed while they were alive. It's not right and it's not correct to live in denial. And it's especially bad when people cling to a deception that is only hurting them. But they become so indoctrinated that they just don't know any better. And so to me, it shows how this person is still being glorified at their funeral. Um, it says, He will be buried in a jade coffin, and a thousand horses will trample the path to it, so that humans crying, the sleep of the dead, did not defile. So it's basically saying, don't even let your cries and your tears, which this king seems to not deserve, don't even let that disturb his eternal sleep. I think there's an idea that while you're alive, you should be held accountable for your actions and your behavior. But after you're gone, it's like that should all be swept under the rug and forgotten. Because you're gone, I guess. <laughs> and that's something that we really, really need to correct. Uh, we need to stop acting as if forgiveness in the absence of life is a good thing. And, you know, forgiveness is also not the same thing as hiding the truth. Especially if there was terrible deception happening while a person in power was on this earth. It should be completely exposed if it's possible to do so after they're gone. And that's what the song seems to embody. It says, It's all a lie that he was the kindest king. It's all not true. He ruled with fire and sword. But here's where it gets interesting, because then it says, I am your king, and I alone. People are like animals. When power over the world is given, it's all a deception. So I take that to mean that now, this is yet another corrupt king, and he's saying, Oh, the former king was terrible, but I'm better. I'm your king now, and I won't be like him. I'll be kinder, and I'll be more fair. And then the next line, I think he's talking to himself when he says, People are like animals. When power over the world is given, it's all a deception. So he doesn't even think of his subjects as human beings. He sees them as something to be easily manipulated by a deception and then mobilized to suit his own needs. And really, that's how it's always worked, uh, right up to modern-day politics, especially in modern day. And think about it, even that word, a king's subjects, that immediately objectifies and dehumanizes people. And it shows you how people who have power over others tend to think about the people who are disadvantaged. Um, it shows you what they think of them. That's why I never understand these people who are all fascinated and excited about meeting a politician. <laughs> I once saw this thing on Facebook that said, uh, believing that a politician actually cares about you or what you want is like believing that the stripper really likes you. <laughs> and I think that's one of the best and truest things I've ever heard. Look, they don't give a shit about you. Uh, it's about what fills their pockets and what shifts power in their favor. And the fact that there are still people on this earth that don't get that is what amazes me. But that's human psychology, I guess. A lot of people need something that they feel is greater than themselves, uh, that they can look up to and believe is absolutely right and absolutely good. I mean, look, that's where the need for religion primarily stems from. And, uh, of course, it all comes down to the fact that so many people don't understand that the greatness is already within themselves. But when it comes to rulers, it's a very common thing for people to do, and it's very easy for someone in power to exploit. So, this song, these lyrics represent what I would call a parable. It's using a story that's as old as time to tell a cautionary tale to make a statement about an unfortunate truth in the world. And that truth is that the corrupt don't stop being corrupt after they're dead. And when we refuse to acknowledge corruption, all that happens is that more corruption takes its place. Like this new, better king. Uh, the way to stop corruption is to expose it. And the way to end subjugation is to stand up for yourself and stop believing that you need something greater. The idea is really to achieve your own greatness, not to seek it out in someone else. And I, I say that often and loudly because it's very true, and people need to hear it. Uh, and the more I think people hear it, the more I think they'll be encouraged to, you know, change something within themselves and find something within themselves that maybe they didn't know was there. And it's very, really important, you know, so... I, if I can uh, help even a little bit with that, I try to, even in these videos. So, uh, But very on point with what the song has to say. Uh, I agree with the message, if that is what it's saying. 
Um, of course, I hope that I translated it correctly, and if my interpretation you think is off in some way, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think the song is about. And uh, I enjoyed it. I did. Uh, like, I wouldn't say it's my number one favorite Aria song, but I still like it, and uh, it's probably like in my top five, you know? So it was really good. Uh, I really enjoyed that solo. Uh, it, the solo was longer than I thought it would be, and uh, that was cool. It was really uh, a good listening experience, so... There you have it. Hopefully I will react to more Russian metal bands sooner rather than later. Of course, leave your requests in the comments or the better option, once again, Patreon Tier 4. That is it for now. Much love and respect to the nuclear family. Much love and respect to all my viewers over in Russia. And I will catch you all very soon. <laughs>